Hi guys, it's nice to be back. So we are talking today about how to create dusty colors like these ones here. So last time we created smoky colors and I wanted to focus today on how to create dusty colors. So it's pretty similar, but smoky colors, I would say a more a softer version. Did I say it? dusty colors are a softer version of smoky colors? So um, I actually got this new buff titanium for the new palette and I did a few sort of some swatches with it the other day because I wasn't sure that I was going to keep it in my palette. I didn't really know but you can see here that the uh, swatches turned out really beautifully and those really dusky kind of colors that I was I like and that I was looking for. So I was really happy to figure that out and uh, I wanted to kind of share that with you today. So here is another iteration. This is Jean Brilliant number no. one by Holbein. So again, I was trying to figure out, should I put this in the palette? I'm not sure if I like the kind of yellow undertones, so I'm not sure, but you can see it does really make some beautiful dusky kind of colors here as well. So, and to some of you, maybe these, the sort of dusty or smoky colors are similar, but I just wanted to explain in my mind how sort of the differentiation here. So on the left side of the page, they're more dusty, they're lighter. And on the right side of the page, you have the more, the darker smoky colors. So when you think of like smoky eye makeup, it's generally dark purples, dark, you know, or black or gray, dark grays. Um, dark browns so that's how I kind of create the smoky colors and then you can see as it kind of fades down the the colors get softer they're, they're more pink they're lighter browns um, and that kind of thing so I will talk a little bit about this through the video so the first thing we're going to do is just swatch the color that we're going to be using today so this is buff titanium it's from Colors of the Iron Range, which is a new shop to me, but it's a really beautiful one. I love their paints. They have kind of earth colors and they have really beautiful paints. So the first thing uh, I'm swatching here is Fuchsia, my, one of my favorite colors. It's a Daniel Smith color and uh, creating, mixing it with the buff titanium makes it kind of more of a sage color. It's quite pretty. And then I'm using the Porphyry Violet Ochre. Okay, I've just grabbed my sketchbook out so I can check that I'm telling you the right thing. So this is the Porphyry Violet Ochre and it is also by um, Colors of the Iron Range. It's one of my favorite colors. It's one of my favorite ways to create smoky colors as well by mixing this or some sort of a violet hematite, a darker um, browns and purples together. So I really love that for smoky colors. But I wanted to see if I could soften them up and make them a bit dustier today. So um, then we have Hematite by Daniel Smith, one of my favorites. I use this instead of black. And then we have uh, Shadow Violet by Daniel Smith. And basically what the buff titanium is doing is uh, creating a, a, a sort of a softer version of the color itself. So where you could uh, mix it with a darker brown and create like a smokier, darker color, the buff titanium is making the color lighter and softer. So generally I use a French ochre to do this. I really like mixing the pinks and like the French ochre or the Sedona, so the lighter brown, the sort of lighter browns with the pinks so I would say, and then that color there was ultramarine violet and then cobalt violet by Windsor and Newton. So uh, when I mix smoky colors, it's more of the darker browns and the darker purples. And when I mix dustier colors, it's almost like a mid-tone brown. So burnt sienna down, so burnt sienna, uh, French ochre, you know, any sort of an ochre, buff titanium, a Naples yellow, something like that, and pinks. But I wanted to see if mixing these lighter colors with the sort of what I would consider smoky colors, like the purples, would create a softer palette as well. And so um, I was really happy with the color uh, range here. 
The last purple colour that I mixed was the Holbein Lilac and I put that in the palette because I didn't have any of the Cobalt Violet left. So, but I have used that and really enjoyed using that. And then now I am doing my traditional sort of dusty colours and I'm using Road Knight and the Buff Titanium. So all of the pinks with the Buff Titanium uh, come out really beautifully as well. So this is the Brilliant Pink with the Buff Titanium uh, Holbein Brilliant Pink, which... Uh, I really like and then we have the the next one I'll do is the shell pink the Holbein shell pink which is one of my favorite colors and with the buff titanium So this one here I'm doing is the Roasted French Ochre and this is what I mean by the darker colours. So I guess in my mind, in my palette, I have a bit of a break there in between the Sedona and the Roasted French Ochre. So anything from the Roasted French Ochre up would create the smokier colours and anything from Sedona down would be dusty colours. And you can see here I'm going to create some of my favourite usual mixes, the Sedona and um the let's see what did i do i'm pretty sure it was sedona and shell pink and then jean brilliant and the french ochre and then the road knight and the sedona and so i've never had buff titanium in my palette before uh, and i don't have like a naples yellow so that is the way i generally make these more dusty colors but I was really pleasantly surprised to see that I could use buff titanium in this way. And uh, yeah, so I will just kind of show you up close here and then we will get into painting an iris. So we're going to use these new colors um, and try and create like a... So we did sort of a smokier version of the iris last video. And then hopefully this video we will create a... Uh, more dusty version with the smoky colors so we're going to use the dark purples but we're going to mix them with the buff titanium and create like a brighter sort of version a softer version of the iris So all the colors I'm mixing here, I'm trying to use from the uh, palette that we just created on the bottom of the page. So I'm using the Ultramarine, Daniel Smith Ultramarine Violet and the Buff Titanium. And then here I actually put in a little bit of the Art Graph as well. So uh, with the, the, you know, this, the sort of round Art Graph charcoal, I actually just cut a bit of that out with like a... A blade and just put that into a half pan so I feel like I would use it more if it's just readily available and I've really been enjoying uh, that it basically works like the hematite the Daniel Smith hematite but it's a bit more of a cool version so the hematite has sort of some brown undertones whereas this uh, is just a cooler version of that uh, but I'm really enjoying it
Okay, so I'm not sure what happened to the rest of the footage there, but hopefully you kind of get the idea of how I finished that. And um, after I create, so I used also pencil on top of it. And here you can see on the right was my very first kind of sketch out of a smoky iris. So I really want to paint one of these for my mum for her birthday if I can. And then we have the sort of more cool toned ones, the dustier ones that we tried today. So, or yeah, so this one here is another one I tried after the first one. And I really love um, creating these flowers because you can use such interesting color combinations. So um, this one here I used still sort of, I used a, a combination of smoky and dusty colors. So I used the peach gold like a um, lilac -y lavender and then I used the violet gray which is actually probably my most used luminance that I have and I haven't had a lot of time to uh, do videos lately so I wasn't kind of sure how this would all turn out but Monday morning I had a few hours and it was just really nice the sun was sort of coming in we've had um, you know a lot of stormy weather and a lot of rain and it just ended up being quite a nice relaxing morning and I started sort of doing these pencil backgrounds so I've never done this before I, I haven't really ever done a pencil you know like a, a, a really nice finished pencil work I remember in year 10 there was this gorgeous um, lorikeet up on the wall and it wasn't necessarily in these colors. It was in very bright, bold greens and blues, the colors of a lorikeet. But it was amazing. And I used to just think, wow, how did they do that? And um, I still have never sort of been able to master that. Or I haven't taken the time even to sort of try. But uh, when I was just sitting here, I just kind of started layering pencils over the top of each other. And I, I think you could like blend this out even more with a solvent. But I, I was just really enjoying the process of kind of putting um, down the different colors and overlaying them. And like, so I'm not speeding this up. This is just kind of what I was doing. So Cir small circular motions and just kind of trying to blend them into each other. So my technique is not the best. I haven't, you know, like I said, I, I'm no pencil expert, but... It was just a really nice kind of, um, yeah, it was just really enjoyable. I think with the pencil you have a little bit more control than with watercolour and then you don't have to wait for the layers to dry as well, so that's another bonus. But I was watching a an oil painting video, I believe, um, maybe, I don't know, a few weeks, a month ago, and... Um, they were talking about creating these layers and building up the layers with 20 or 30 different layers and how the light will then end up being seen through the layers and maybe they um, use a matte medium between layers as well to sort of break up the layers even more and create more depth in the painting and how the light shines through all these layers. And I've just been thinking and thinking about that and about how to... Uh, be able to kind of do that with watercolor or with pencils or with other things so that you have all these layers of depth and luminosity in your painting. It's really a new concept for me uh, having you know like so not just color mixing on the palette but color mixing in the layers. So I did it a little bit in the painterly flower, uh, the last flower where I used the opera rose and then the organic vermilion on top. But, you know, I'm, I'm looking at like more layers and more layers and how the colors that you've put below will then mix with the colors on top. So it's a really interesting um, kind of thought process, I guess. But anyway, um, I hope you guys liked this video. If you have any questions, let me know. Um, if you're not sure which colors or if I've kind of haven't, if I've rushed past something, just leave me the timestamps below and I'll be able to tell you like at this time, you know, it was this color.
so i don't think i'll get the potter's pink video done this week but i wanted to just do a fun little video about uh, creating and painting your own palette um, it's really nice so i did this one as well the other morning and i think you guys will like it so i will see you then bye